to the committee. Uh, I am Council Member Mike Bonin, the Chair of the Committee, and I am joined today by my colleague, uh, Mr. Joe Buscaino of the 15th District. Uh, and we are going to get underway. Uh, before we start, uh, if the clerk could uh, please uh, read the call-in instructions. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Members of the public who would like to offer public comment on the items listed on the agenda should call 1-669-254-5252 and use meeting ID number 161-750-5079 and then press pound. Press pound again when prompted for participant ID. Once admitted into the meeting, press star 9 to request to speak. Thank you. Excellent. Thank you very much. Uh, Mr. Bruins, do we have anybody lined up for public comment already? We do. Um, one moment, please. I'm sorry, okay. Mr. Chair, would you like me to call the roll for the meeting? Uh, sure. Okay. Uh, Council Member Bonin. Here. Council Member Coretz. Council Member Coretz is absent. Council Member Buscaino. Here. Two members and a quorum, Mr. Chair. Thank you very much. Uh, so uh, let's begin with uh, public comment. This is a special meeting uh, of the committee. So we'll be taking public comment on the items on the agenda, but we do not take general public comment uh, on special meetings. Mr. Bruin. Okay, first caller, you are up. Please identify yourself and which item you'd like to speak on. First caller, you need to unmute yourself by pressing star six. You are Los Angeles City Council. My name is Cole DeMeo, and first I would like to thank you for your time and service to our community. I would like to address that I'm in full support of LA DOT using traffic control devices to discourage street racing. I understand that this issue has gotten progressively worse over the last decade and often results in fatalities. My concern is what impact these devices are having on traffic flow across the city. Additionally, I believe that the use of stoplight cameras to issue tickets is unfair and should not be allowed as an acceptable form of issuing citations. In the future, I believe only police officers should be able to issue traffic violations. Again, I'd like to thank you for your time and allowing me to speak, and I look forward to seeing how you address these concerns. Okay, that was related to item 10. Um, then that is our only, uh, I see we have, okay, one more caller, sorry. Um, next caller, please identify yourself and which items you'd like to speak on. And once again, you'll need to press star six to unmute yourself. There you go. Uh, thank you, Eric. Eric, uh, and thank you, Chair Bonin, uh, as, as well as Councilman Cressman Busca. You know, this is uh, <clears throat> Eli Lipman uh, speaking on behalf of Move LA, as well as uh, I'm co chair of the Slate Z South LA Promise Zone uh, Transit Work Group uh, in strong support of item four, Council File uh, 21 1073. Um, Really just very um, excited to see the city and LA Metro moving forward with the rail to rail project. Um, I think this way we will have more of a seamless project if it's one contractor working both on the Metro alignment as well as the city right of way to ensure continuity between, um, you know, around uh, traffic signals and, and other crossings. Uh, and just looking um, to see that this critical piece of infrastructure in South LA moves forward as soon as possible. I know it's going to, are you planning to have it on the Metro agenda soon? So I appreciate this committee moving it forward. Um, and there's plenty of support in the community to, uh, to, to see this project uh, happen and, and connect the uh, soon to be open Crenshaw line with uh, the blue line, uh, I mean, the A line. Uh, the, the the Silver Line J Line and uh, and potentially even out to uh, the West Santa Ana branch line when that comes in uh, all converging at Slauson. So uh, again, encourage uh, your strong support of this item. Thank you. Thank you. 
Okay, there is one more caller on the, on the queue. Uh, please identify yourself and which items you'd like to speak on. It's me, your favorite critic. All items in general public comment. There, there, there is no general public comment today because it is a special meeting. Um, you may pick That's right. agenda items to comment on. But Wait. I'll take all the fucking items. You, you must identify which item you'd like to speak on. No, nigga. It's all the items. Okay. I you have, get you all. Have two, you have two minutes. You may begin. Yeah. I just want to let you know that Mark Bonnet took this meeting and switched it to a special. This is the not general public coming where we talk about mobility. How the fuck can you have mobility down there in the goddamn first district, the left district, all them fucking homeless tent motherfuckers sitting there blocking the goddamn sidewalk. Now you go out in the street and uh-oh, you step on a pile of shit. But it ain't dog shit. No, it came out of a human asshole. Please you step over the address field. items on the agenda for your comments. Your time will be ended. You must address you specific agenda items. I'm talking about the mobility fucking items. You got three of them on the agenda. Unless I can't read. Can I read? Where's my Unclear. puppet? Please identify <laughs> which specific and, items. And the call. Okay. The call. We're done. Fuck you. Okay. Uh, thank you, everybody. Um, and that concludes public comment, Mr. Burns. Yes, it does. All right, uh, Mr. Busca, you know, I was going to recommend for consent approval items two, three, four, five, six, eight, ten, and eleven. Uh, Happy and to move those items. All right, uh, let's do a roll call, Mr. Uh, Verano. Council Member Bonin. Aye. Council Member Coretz. Council Member Coretz is absent. Council Member Buscaino. Yes. Two ayes, and these items are approved. All right, uh, and we will uh, not be doing item number one today. Uh, Ms. Reynolds is not here. Um, uh, I'm going to dispense, I think, pretty quickly with a couple other items before we move on to the, the the, the two substantive items. Um, could uh, the, uh, we have uh, technical amendments to items 7, 12, and 13. Uh, could uh, the CLA read the technical amendment to item 7, please? Yes, Mr. Chair. Uh, item 7 is uh, Motion Rodriguez Lee relative to codifying equestrian networks and horse trails as part of the amended mobility plan 2035. Council file number 15-07. 19-S15, and it's accompanying Complete Streets Design Guide, Los Angeles Municipal Code Section 17.05 and related matters. And the amendment for the record is, instruct the planning department in consultation with the Bureau of Engineering, Department of Transportation, Department of Building and Safety, and the City Attorney's Office to report with recommendations to codify a dedication process for a network of equestrian trails similar to the street dedication process that applies to both by right and discretionary development is, is administered during the plan check permitting process and includes design standards and provisions for maintenance. Okay, um, uh, no objection from me on that. Uh, any objection, Mr. Briscoe, you know? Nope, I'm good with that. Uh, let's uh, do a vote, to Mr. Rano. Council Member Bonin. Aye. Council Member Coretz. Council Member Coretz is absent. Council Member Buscaino. Aye. Two ayes, and this item is approved as amended. Thank you. All right. I believe we have a technical amendment on item 12. That's right. Item 12 is LADOT report relative to transferring $500,000 from the unappropriated balance to the LADOT to fund overtime for traffic officer enforcement of abandoned vehicles and related matters. This item has also been referred to Budget and Finance Committee, and the amendments are as follows. Authorize the controller to transfer and appropriate $200,000 
from the unappropriated balance fund number 100-58 abandoned vehicle task force account number 580341 to the Department of Transportation fund number 100-94 overtime general account number 001090 to provide increased overtime support dedicated to abandoned vehicle enforcement efforts. Number two, instruct LADOT to report within 30 days in consultation with service providers and LAPD with a recommended allocation of the remaining $300,000 that includes A, housing and service interventions for people living in vehicles identified as priorities for impounding under Council File 21-0956, including but not limited to housing vouchers and problem solving funds, and B, lease of a temporary storage facility for impounded and or voluntarily stored vehicles. Okay. Uh, any questions, Mr. Briscano? So again, if I can, Mr. Chair, the $300,000 of the 500 will be used for storage and placement of housing, housing placement rather? Yeah, well, ask DOT to give us uh, recommendations on how to do that. So it's not an allocation yet. Got it. Okay, I'm good with that. Okay. Uh, so take a vote, Mr. Verano. Council Member Bonin. Aye. Council Member Coretz. Council Member Coretz is absent. Council Member Buscaino. Aye. Two ayes, and this item is approved as amended. All right, and item 13. Okay, and, and just for the record, Mr. Chair, uh, the recommendations I just read into the record are to replace the recommendations that were uh, in DOT's original report. Yeah. Um, item number 13, LEDOT report relative to upgrades for uncontrolled marked crosswalks in the city of Los Angeles. And these amendments uh, will also be replacing the amendments or the recommendation language in DOT's report as follows. That the city council subject to the approval of the mayor one, instruct LEDOT to report within 180 days with the results of the complete traffic control studies for 155 uncontrolled marked crosswalk locations, including recommended traffic control measures, estimated costs for these measures, and estimated multi-year funding and staffing needs to support the implementation. Number two, instruct LEDOT with assistance from the Bureau of Engineering and Bureau of Street Services to report within 30 days with estimated multi-year funding and staffing needs to implement all 47 approved but unfunded crosswalk locations, including projected fiscal year 22-23 funding and staffing needs. Number three, authorize LADOT to enter into cooperative agreements with Caltrans subject to the approval of the city attorney as to form and legality for the installation of traffic control measures along Lincoln Boulevard and Santa Monica Boulevard and further authorized payment for said work from the Measure M Local Return Special Fund number 59C-94, Vision Zero Corridor Projects account number 94TG25 as follows. $1,129,000 for the installation of pedestrian beacons at five crosswalks along Lincoln Boulevard, Victoria Avenue, Amoroso Place, Vernon Avenue, Flower Avenue and Commonwealth Avenue and $825,000 for the installation of pedestrian beacons at six crosswalks along Santa Monica Boulevard, Amherst Avenue, Armacost Avenue, Granville Avenue, Stoner Avenue, Berry Avenue, and Wellesley Avenue. Okay, thanks. Um, a lot of work here for uh, uh, LADOT and the various departments ahead. Uh, to to make safety a priority at, at these crosswalks. Um, and, and note that we have new controls such as flashing beacons uh, and signals that have been added at 202 non-signalized locations. Uh, and that means there's a remaining 402 uncontrolled marked crosswalk locations that have no traffic controls beyond signage and, and striping. Uh, so we really need a, a multi-year plan to uh, to get this done. Uh, and these are some steps to start getting the departments to uh, to move in that uh, direction um, and to work out some cooperative agreements with Caltrans, uh, where uh, some of the jurisdictional issues make it even more difficult to, to get things done. Um, uh, any questions, Mr. Mr. B? Nope. Good. 
good. Good to go. Thank you. Okay. Uh, let's take a vote, Mr. Corona. Council Member Bonnet. Aye. Council Member Coretz. Council Member Coretz is absent. Council Member Buscaino. Aye. Two ayes, and this item is approved as amended. Thank you much. Uh, and is uh, the relevant uh, Metro staff on board for item number 14? I see Hi. Elba here. Mm -hmm. And is, is, yeah, go ahead, Elba. Oh, no, I'm here and I have a presentation, so okay. I can share my screen. Uh, yeah, we're going to go to item 14. If the CLA could uh, read the item. Yeah. Item number 14 is Chief Legislative Analyst Report relative to street harassment in public spaces and transit systems. Okay. Uh, and what we have here in this report is Metro's gonna ha Metro has a presentation. The CLA will present their, their recommendations. LADOT is available for questions. Uh, I know Mr. Buscaino has uh, some amendments he'd like to make. Uh, but Mr. Briscoe, is there anything you'd like to say to kick us off on this item before we go? Yeah, to that? appreciate that, Mr. Chair, and thank you for scheduling this. I, I know you've been um, uh, on the Metro Board and leading an effort um, on customer service and making sure that our riders and our public transportation systems are feel safe at all times and being responsive to some of those concerns. Uh, appreciate your leadership on the Metro Board uh, in that space, and I know you also uh, chair a committee that oversees. Um, um, customer service and ridership, correct? Yes. So appreciate you um, on that front. Um, so this report is very important to me. It really addresses the issue of, of street harassment, in public spaces in LA, very common issue with serious implications uh, for our residents and the future of our transit systems. That's uh, also very unfortunately um, un underreported. And in my opinion, not discussed on a level that it needs to be. The report before us covers a broad range of vulnerable populations, and it's because the reality, unfortunately, is that many uh, individuals across all demographics uh, and differences are victims of street harassment in, in Los Angeles. And um, as we all know, there was a recent spike in verbal and physical harassment against the API Jewish communities, um, and, and the recommendations in this report will better protect these and all other vulnerable groups in Los Angeles. However, it's worth noting that women, and in particular young women, are statistically the, the most targeted population, most often appearing in the form of sexual harassment. And the data shows that street harassment begins at a very young age for this population, around nine or 10 years old, and the psychological effects of repeated incidents over time can be severe, as you can imagine. But beyond serious uh, psychological effects, incidents that begin with verbal harassment or a gesture can, can and do lead to physical harassment and violence. Uh, the victim cannot know the intent of their harasser, and it's too risky to assume that it ends with a comment or, or gesture. Um, it's also difficult not to mention what took place this morning appear on, on uh, you know, our phones and, and breaking news, uh, the tragedy um, in New York City this morning in Brooklyn train, which led 16 people seriously injured. Our prayers uh, continue to go out with the, the victims and their families in the city of New York, hopeful that the suspect who is still at large will be um, found and, and held accountable. This tragic incident is a very different issue than street harassment. It's a reminder why we must always prioritize safety. No one should have to worry about their safety while they're in a public space or on a transit, no matter the degree of the crime. None of this is acceptable. And as gas prices continue to soar in California, we have to understand that many people don't have an alternative. They, have, they must walk, bike, or take public transit to get to and from work or run errands. And this report is personal to me. I think about my daughter who I always want to protect. Uh, she should always be safe walking in our streets or taking our city transit system. I think about my wife. I think about my son who is a student pri primarily um, this is taking a, a, a transit rider in a big city today. I think about some of our, our staffers who have come to us as local elected leaders uh, seeking and demanding that we do something to elevate uh, the, the awareness of street harassment, including some of a few of, of, of my, um, uh, my, my team members. It's our duty to protect um, 
our children, our, our mothers, seniors, the LGBTQ plus individuals, very vulnerable population in our public spaces. And quite frankly, we're, fa we're failing short. Uh, and we're falling short on this. Um, one final note, if I can, Mr. Chair, I really want to remind all of us to continue to broaden the conversation uh, about pedestrian rider safety beyond just infrastructure. The city uh, makes large capital investments to our physical environment every year in the name of safety, but the issue of street harassment and personal safety must also be a top priority where people will continue to use other travel options available to them. Um, before we get into the presentation, I do want to thank um, the presence of, of, of Metro, who's here. Appreciate your presence. I want to thank CLA, Maria Souza Roundtree, for th uh, thoroughly researching this issue, developing this carefully written report before us, and proposing a set of robust recommendations. I want to thank uh, my legislative uh, deputy, Laura Hill. Uh, for working with Maria and um, our respective offices who signed on to this. We do have two small amendments, as you uh, indicated, um, which we'll, we'll, um, we'll address uh, after the presentation, or unless you want me to read them off now. Uh, well, why don't we do the presentation first, and then we can All right, cool. Thank you. All right, uh, let's go to Metro. Okay, can you see my screen? I can see your screen. Okay, so good afternoon. I'm Elba Heat Carols, and let me turn on my camera real quick. Okay, there I go. Okay, good afternoon. I'm Elba Heat Carols. I'm the Deputy Chief of Staff at Metro, and I'll be providing you with an overview of um, some of our strategies to address harassment on our system. So transit, um, transit riders, especially women and LGBTQI are more often victims of a wide range of harassment, verbal, nonverbal, and physical. Um, unfortunately, harassment and sexual harassment is an under, underreported safety issue and not always visible in our crime statistics. Um, a coordinated approach to the safety issue is essential to make transit safer for all so that it doesn't disproportionately impact some from being able to use transit. Um, Metro's approach against harassment incorporate, incorporates utilizing best practices, recent study recommendations from Metro's How Women's, How Women's Travel Study, a recent UCLA study on sexual harassment and customer, customer survey results. So first, um, making, making reporting of harassment easy is essential. Having a centralized app, a phone number, and text number can help victims report harassment easily. In January of 2022, this year, Metro made significant enhancements to the Transit Watch app listed on this slide. Um, some of those are Spanish language support, um, um, push notifications with um, critical information, ability to report and upload a phone number, and the ability to contact security by text message. To provide the customer experience, Metro Security and law enforcement decided to streamline all the sexual harassment and hate crime incidents through Metro Security Operations Center. Um, this transition eliminates the challenge and complications of multiple numbers provided to customers seeking ass assistance. This slide shows some of the support numbers that are provided to customers who are seeking assistance. Um, in 2019, Metro conducted a How Women Travel study. Uh, safety was identified as a key barrier to women using transit. Some of the top changes identified that would make current and previous female riders feel safe was um, transit police nearby, other people nearby, better lighting, security cameras, um, we are currently working on a gender action plan at Metro, and one of the components of the gender action plan is the development of a gender analysis tool. We'll be using that tool on current safety programs and future programs to identify if there are any gaps or opportunities for improvements, and we'll be recommending the gender action strategies to our CEO and board for consideration soon. 
Um, but still, Metro has established key safety strategies um, that were identified from the How Women Travel Study its preliminary recommendations. And the next slides will touch on some of those initiatives. <clears throat> as as um, as we identified in the How Women Travel Study, highlighting um, highlighted that lighting is an important. Um, feature to help riders feel safe while waiting at bus stops. Um, well lit buses help deter crime and improve the perception of safety. Um, Metro is budgeting $1.5 million each year to supplement grants and other sources to improve the lighting at, at bus stops. Um, our blue light call boxes is, um, is intended to replace existing telephone mm -hmm. and intercom units providing riders with more reliable communication and improving public safety on Metro. Um, the call point units will have uh, a blue light for greater visibility from all areas of the platform. It'll also have information and emergency buttons to allow calls um, for information go directly to our rail operations control and calls for emergency assistance to be routed to security. It also will integrate um, CCTV cameras. Again, this was one recommendation from our Metro's Women and Girls Governing Council um, that they identified to provide more visibility and direct line to emergency and customer services, and is also supported by the Understanding How Women Travel Study. And this um, blue light is um, will be implemented in two phases and is currently in phase one. Um, next is a bystander training. Um, this training will help bystanders and transit staff to be more watchful and aware of the surroundings. Um, this purpose of this initiative is to develop a program to train employees and riders on what to expect during a security incident, how to be a good witness, how to protect themselves and others, and what resources are available to assist them following um, an incident. And we've commenced um, internal training. Another best practice is to survey our customers um, even though our last onboard survey was conducted in the fall of 2019 due to COVID, um, that survey did include sexual harassment questions. As well, um, we recently conducted a safety survey in September of 2021 that included questions about harassment, sexual and racial. And we continue to use this data to help with our safety strategies. And as noted earlier, presence is an is important um, to female riders in terms of safety. Our transit ambassador pilot program will be providing the non-law enforcement people presence that they requested. The ambassador program will serve as eyes and ears to report and deter crime. This program is another resource that will be added to the full public, public safety strategy at Metro. Um, so with that, that concludes um, my presentation is just a quick overview of what we're doing at Metro. So thank you. Thank you. Um, uh, CLA, uh, you had. Um, thank you, Mr. Chair. I can just do a quick um, overview of the report. Um, per the instructions in the motion, we work with the numerous departments and bureaus to discuss the issue and talk about what the city can do to address it. I think as Metro has dis um, discussed in their presentation and as the council member outlined, um, just about everybody who rides public transportation has experienced some type of harassment and for far too long it has been really a feeling that unless it's a violent assault, it's not really that big a deal and people just need to kind of it's just accepted as um, that it's going to happen. And it's really only relatively recently that it's been recognized as something that's not only prevalent, but not okay. Um, it is a form of violence and it's a symptom of inequality and disproportionately affects women and people of color. And we need to do something about it. Um, DOT has done some great work in raising awareness and trying to address the problem in different ways, which we've identified in the report. And we've also included recommendations for them to provide uh, reports on these efforts. So just to summarize, the report identifies the following seven recommendations that take kind of a comprehensive view of the problem. Um, recommendation one is to instruct DOT to require the city's transit operating contractors to collect data about street harassment and develop procedures and processes to receive and report incidents of harassment on transit as well as bus stops. Uh, recommendation two, instruct the Department of Recreation and Parks, DOT, and the Bureaus of Street Lighting and Street Services to look at 
and do an analysis of public space under their jurisdiction, a report on improvements that can be um, implemented uh, to address the physical environment and new standards that may um, improve safety and reduce harassment. Uh, recommendation three is instruct DOT to report statistics on the reliability of transit service and the possibility of expanding the real time real time bus arrival information at bus stops to include anti harassment information and options to report such incidents. Um, number four is instruct DOT to report on their new pilot program that would require the city's transit contractors to allow on demand stops at night. I believe that was implemented just uh, a few months ago. Recommendation five is instruct ITA to report on digital tools and technologies that include digital platforms and smartphone apps that would make it easy to report street harassment in the public right away and connect people with services if they've been affected by harassment. Uh, recommendation six is instruct the civil rights, civil human rights and equity department and the Department of Cultural Affairs with um, the assistance of our office to develop a strategy to implement an anti harassment public education campaign, as well as potential funding options. And the last recommendation number seven is request the city attorney to review review penal code sections to include wide range of street and sexual harassment behaviors as criminal offenses. Um, I understand that the committee might have some changes to the recommendations and we're certainly open to um, anything you have to offer. So that would conclude my presentation. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Buscaino, back to you. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I do want to thank Ms. Geros for uh, your presence here and your thoughtful, comprehensive um, presentation, recognizing the commitment Metro has, has placed in, in you know, putting public safety and the forethought of, of, of the work that you're doing there in response to some of the concerns the riders have. Also, I uh, know you've been piloting, as you indicated, a uh, number of new ideas, which um, were born out of the Public Safety um, Advisory Committee. So again, thank you for your efforts. Um, just want to um, ask if, if I can, Ms. Higueros, um, of all the safety programs that have been implemented thus far, which have uh, been the most effective in improving the safety uh, on transit and, and, and platforms? Uh, I think um, they're all in the process. I, I don't, I couldn't respond exactly on the most effective one. I do think that reporting and having a centralized area for this information is important. So I think the improvements to the Transit Watch app are key um, uh, to collect that data is important. So we know what's happening in our system. Um, I also think that lighting is really important. And so we, we've done some lighting and we continue to work um, with the cities to, to advance that program and that initiative. But those are the two ones that um, are, are important. And um, I had a question about training and you address that with the training of, of, the, of the Metro um, operators. Um, question on uh, the when the focus uh, of the report um, is on street harassment and soft approaches to to curtail that issue specifically, but again, as I mentioned in my opening comments, the, the 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 tragedy that took place in the Brooklyn train during rush hour this morning, I do want to touch on violent crimes on our city and county transit systems. And as we all know, something that starts as harassment can escalate into a violent crime, which is why we, we can't always separate the two issues. So with that, um, when it comes to enforcement, what have you all found from your research and experience when um, officers are needed and what soft approaches are more effective? Um, unfortunately, I'm not the expert in that area. Um, in terms of enforcement, um, I'd be happy to um, respond, um, provide a written response to your okay. question. We, we can work with our office on, on that. Uh, understanding now that th this fall we're uh, expected to see um, live the, the, uh, the ambassador program. Is that what you indicated in your report? Yes, in fall. And strategically, where are we placing the the ambassadors? Um, right now, uh, we just released an RFP, so I'm limited on what I could share. But okay. the hope is that, and I have Desiree Jones, I believe, is on the on the line here, who's overseeing our transit ambassador program. Um, 
but right now the the intent is that we can be able to um, deploy this pilot program um, throughout our system. Okay, and lastly, um, I know um, I just want to make sure that with there's a security contracts and partnerships within Metro. Uh, how do we, and I know the one, the LAPD one's up here in a, in a few months. Just want to make sure that, you know, with the sheriff, the, the ambassadors and LAPD, how, how do we ensure that they're all working uh, cohesively? Yes. Um, again, um, then for, uh, law enforcement isn't my area of expertise here, but um, we are approaching this as a multi-layered approach to safety. So the transit ambassador, our law enforcement, our homeless outreach, um, our security, our Metro Transit are all working collectively to provide a holistic approach to security. And um, we are trying to ensure that the right incident, um, the right response to the right incident. So- um, it would also be a hell of a lot easier if one of the agencies uh, wasn't run by uh, uh, a, a, a sheriff who is a bully and a demagogue and uh, defies uh, civilian authority. Uh, it's really hard to manage a transit uh, security agency when one of the heads of them actually does not believe that he works for civilians, uh, whether it's the Metro Board or the County Board of Supervisors. Um, that's a big issue, and one I promise you will come up uh, in the discussion of the contract. The contract uh, with the Metro Board. <laughs> Tell us how you truly feel, Mike. <laughs> oh, um, I haven't begun to yet. <laughs> <laughs> Let me, uh, if I can, Mr. Chair, uh, on those amendments, recommendations, uh, remove CLA recommendation seven and add the following recommendation: instruct um, LADOT, bureaus of street services, street lighting. Department of Recreation and Parks report uh, back on the resources needed to create a mandatory educational and bystander training program for all city employees who operate transit or otherwise work in the public right of way. So we have, um, we can do our part as a city and its employees um, to have that type of mandatory educational and, and bystander training program for all the city employees that work, of course, uh, within the transit systems that we oversee and operate. Are you okay with that? Uh, yes, absolutely. Right, okay. No, thank, thank, th thank you. Awesome. Let, let, let me just thank you for the motion, Mr. Bustano, and thank you for uh, to, to Metro staff and to DOT and, and CLA for um, uh, the, 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 the reports and the recommendations. And thank you, Mr. Buscaino, uh, and and your staff, which literally has lived experience with this subject, uh, for the amendments. I think this is um, th this is important stuff to do, and I. I think the, the, the range of just the conversation we've had over the past 15 minutes really illustrates how we need a whole range of solutions and approaches and tools and remedies to address public safety concerns on our streets and, and on our transit system. Um, you know, uh, when when my niece was interning for me about five years ago, or interning for the mayor about five years ago, uh, she rode Metro and, you know, cat calls and, and, and whistles, just as she had, you know, on, on, on the, the sidewalks at some tourist attractions mm. in, in parts of, of, of Los Angeles. Um, and that's one end of a spectrum of people not feeling comfortable and safe. And then we have the, the, the very horrific example of what happened on the subway in, in, in New York City today. And those, those clearly require different tools to address them. So I'm glad that, uh, I'm, I'm really glad the work that the Public Safety Advisory Committee at, at, at Metro has been doing is coming back with a range of solutions, uh, including the transit ambassadors, including I hope, you know, more activation of public space, including more mental health workers, uh, a whole range of different solutions to address a whole range of, of, of different issues. Um, I think that's important. And I think it's a real sign that Metro has been listening to the very diverse and varied concerns of its passengers, which are many of whom are asking for very different 
and sometimes contradictory things. Um, a lot of work to be done there. I also want to note that um, you know earlier in this meeting, uh, we took uh, another action that I think helps raise the awareness of, of this in a different way. You know, harassment on the streets or, or on, on transit, it's a huge issue. It's an issue, as, as Mr. Bruce Gaino noted, for the API community. It's a huge issue for the LGBTQ community. And it's a huge issue for, for, for women. And um, uh, earlier in this meeting, we approved a motion to advance gender equity in transportation. It is a big initiative that, 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 that Ms. Reynolds and a number of others have been working on. And, and it, it's just another path that we need to be taking to, to address the mobility needs for everybody. Uh, you know, if we want people to walk, if we want people to take transit, uh, they need to feel safe everywhere. So uh, part of a, a broad range of solutions for public safety, a broad range of solutions for addressing equity and, and mobility. So glad to see that and happy to second Mr. Gruski and his motions. Uh, his amendments. Uh, Mr. Verano, why don't we take a vote as amended? Councilmember Bonin. Aye. Councilmember Coretz. Councilmember Coretz is absent. Councilmember Buscaino. Yes, with uh, gratitude to uh, Alba and Maria and LADOT, really appreciate this. Thank you so much. Thank you, Mr. Chair. To I Thank you. Is, item is approved as amended. Excellent. And that brings us to, I believe, there's one item left on the agenda, which is item number nine. Okay. Item number nine is LEDOT report relative to the Vision Zero implementation strategy for 2022. All right. And I believe uh, that we have a presentation from LEDOT on this, Lauren. Yes, good afternoon, council members. This is Dan Mitchell, Assistant General Manager with LADOT. Uh, today we'll share some of the highlights of the Vision Zero program, uh, their accomplishments in 2021, and present our strategy for 2022. But before we do, it's important to acknowledge the impact of the global pandemic on traffic safety. In the first nine months of 2021, Car crashes killed almost 40,000 Americans, the highest recorded number since 2006. In the city of Los Angeles, 294 people were killed, a 22% increase since 2020. The National Highway Safety Administration has found that crashes involving speeding and not using a seatbelt are higher than in pre-pandemic pre levels. For many years in Los Angeles, unsafe speed has been the top primary collision factor in fatal crashes. However, during the pandemic, the share of fatal crashes from unsafe speed increased from 18% up to 24%. And item 10 on today's agenda provides some information about how we're attempting to discourage street racing in the city. So far in these first three months of 2022, Los Angeles has experienced a 20%, a further 20% increase in people dying and being seriously injured on our streets. Honing in on just fatalities alone, we have actually seen an 18% decrease in vehicle to vehicle crashes, but a whopping 43% increase in people walking who are killed in traffic crashes. Overall, just this year, these senseless deaths have left families without 81 loved ones. These are parents, sisters, brothers, children who will never be the same. These families are asking, why did this have to happen? In the end, the tools LADOT has at our disposal are some colored lights, some painted lines, and some metal signs. Those don't by themselves make a difference. They're cues about common rules that we've established to get around safely. But they require people to respect those rules and change their behavior. But it appears that many people are too busy, careless, or focused on their own selfish needs. We have people messing with their phones, unwilling to wait their turn, or in some way intoxicated while they're behind the wheel. We're suffering in Los Angeles from an epidemic of a lack of respect for other people as they're moving around the city. We are together doing important work in Vision Zero. I often say that we're on a mission from God. 
but we must also experience a significant change in the hearts and minds of all, El of all Angelinos to slow down, give their full attention when on the street and to respect themselves and one another and how they behave while moving around on our public streets. So with that context, I'd like to turn this over to Lauren Ballard, who will be giving her last report on Vision Zero to this committee. Lauren recently promoted to our Transit Bureau, where she will join former Vision Zero leader, Mariana Valdivia, who is our new Chief of Transit. Uh, I would like to recognize and thank both Mariana and Lauren for all of the selfless and amazing work they have contributed to make our streets safer over the last few years. And with great appreciation for her, I would like to now turn it over to Lauren. Thank you, Dan. Good afternoon, council members. Uh, my name is Lauren Ballard with LADOT, uh, formerly with Vision Zero, currently with our Transit Bureau. As directed by council, we are here to summarize and provide a little more detail on our 2021 Vision Zero accomplishments and provide an overview of our 2022 work plan. We are guided by the Vision Zero principle that roadway crashes resulting in fatalities and severe injuries are preventable through engineering, enforcement, and education. The pandemic has exacerbated an ongoing traffic safety crisis in the United States, as well as here in Los Angeles. And at LADOT, we remain even more committed than ever to this work. We focus on building safety improvements on our high injury network, and more specifically on our priority corridors. We are dedicated to eliminating excessive speeding, the top factor in fatal and severe injury crashes through engineering and legislative change. Over the last five years, the Vision Zero team has installed 10 and a half miles of priority corridor projects that include lane reconfigurations, where vehicle lanes are reorganized to calm traffic and support walking, biking, and or transit. We recently completed a one-year post-project evaluation of the six-mile Avalon Lane Reconfiguration Project that we installed back in 2020. We compared vehicle speeds before the project and one year after the project and found a 78% reduction in motorists traveling 40 miles per hour or higher. This is really important because these are the speeds at which crashes are the most deadly. In 2021, LADOT completed a two mile lane reconfiguration project on Adams Boulevard, where car crashes had killed nine people over a 10 year period. In 2022, we are engaging community members in Wilmington on a lane reconfiguration project on Anaheim Street and with community support, look forward to implementing the project later this year. On these streets and other priority corridors, we've piloted new techniques for slowing speeds, such as speed tables, and left turn and right turn calming through the use of plastic bollards and striping. Indeed, cities need a variety of tools to address the speeding that we see on our streets. We were happy to support the successful California State Assembly Bill 43, which moves California away from the outdated 85th percentile rule and grants cities more local control in setting speed limits. Under the new law, Los Angeles will, by the end of this fiscal year, reduce speeds on, by five miles per hour on 177 miles of city streets. In 2022, we will continue to work with other cities and state representatives to advocate for automated speed enforcement. Speed safety cameras have reduced crashes by up to 70% in cities that have implemented pilots. And LADOT, uh, while we will always lead with engineering treatments, improving safety requires multiple strategies. If successful, this bill will add an important new tool to our toolbox. To improve pedestrian safety, LADOT pairs speed management elements with pedestrian infrastructure. Since 2017, improvements include 3,500 high visibility crosswalk upgrades, which improve the visibility of people in crosswalks, 48 pedestrian refuge islands, which give pedestrians a chance to pause between crossing directions of traffic, 664 leading pedestrian intervals, which give pedestrians a head start when crossing at a signalized intersection, which makes them more visible to drivers. 54 pedestrian activated beacons, which alert drivers to the presence of a pedestrian in a crosswalk and improve rates of driver yielding. In 2022, we will be installing 26 additional pedestrian activated flashing beacons and 115 leading pedestrian intervals. 
New and upgraded traffic signals improve safety for all at intersections. Since 2018, LADOT Vision Zero has identified, designed, and implemented a number of critical intersection upgrades, including 94 left turn signal upgrades and 43 new traffic signals. This year, we will install an additional 40 new left turn signal upgrades and 29 new signals. Altogether, using nationally available crash modification factor statistics, we estimate that, that the pedestrian and traffic signal improvements made by LADOT will save up to 136 people from death and severe injury crashes over five years. We also understand the importance of working together with our partner departments who have a hand in the safety and quality of Los Angeles streets. We work closely with the Department of Public Works on the city's complete streets program. In 2021, the city completed the Main Streets Complete Streets Project in South Los Angeles. We anticipate breaking ground on the Avalon Project in 2022 and completing the Reseda Boulevard Project in 2023. These two projects include the key basics like sidewalk repair and ADA ramp upgrades, but they also include key complete streets elements, including protected bike lanes and transit platforms and islands. We have collaborated with Streets LA to, make, to bring major grant funding to Vision Zero Priority Corridor projects, like Sepulveda Boulevard and Broadway, which have been awarded a combined more than $50 million in state funding. We're, cl we're collaborating this year on two additional grant applications to be submitted in June of this year for the Priority Corridors Anaheim Street and Western Avenue. We're happy to share that through a three-year collaboration with Caltrans, the state will be adding or upgrading 11 pedestrian beacons on the priority corridors, Lincoln Boulevard in Venice and Santa Monica Boulevard in West LA. This year, we are launching two major data analyses aimed at a proactive approach to identifying safety issues. We've recently launched a project with a consultant partner to study almost 100 intersections using computer vision to measure near misses and predict injury crashes. We will bring a consultant on in 2022 to develop a systemic safety analysis. This project will identify high-risk locations for severe and fatal collisions based on the relationship between roadway characteristics and crash patterns. The systemic safety analysis will be a complement to our HIN. We remain committed to our successful and well-established Safe Routes to School program and are really excited to launch our Safe Routes for Seniors effort in 2022. In closing, we want to acknowledge the dedication of our Vision Zero team, our field crews, our partner agencies, and our city leaders, and especially our advocacy community. We are determined to meet the need for transformational safety improvements in Los Angeles, and will continue to expand our toolbox to work towards the elimination of traffic-related fatalities in the city. We are here to answer any questions or address any concerns that you may have. Thank you. Uh Thank you for the report. Dan, was there anything else or can I say a few things? Okay, cool. Uh, thank you, uh, Lauren, for the report and um, congratulations. Uh, I'm disappointed you won't be personally helming the Vision Zero effort, but uh, I'm proud uh, that you got the new position and I know you're gonna do fantastic things there. Uh, 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 and you have done, and, and the department has done really tremendous work uh, on Vision Zero. I am uh, always encouraged by the, the work that is being done. Uh, it's always great to hear about it in one sitting like this when you get a sense of the, the scale and the scope of it. Uh, it is all really important and essential work. Um, the only thing is it, it, it just ain't enough. We're not resourcing you well enough to, to, to do as much as we need to actually to begin the, turn the numbers in the opposite direction. And frankly, we're not doing enough to, to coordinate the other agencies to sort of bend to the vision zero will and, 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 and get that stuff done as well. And that's the, the work that uh, Mr. Buscaino and I uh, need to continue pushing the, the rest of the council on. Um, I think it's appropriate for your 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 uh, final meeting discussing Vision Zero with us. You've got the two council members who really like protected bike lanes, uh, so that's appropriate. Um, uh, also, just want to note that you know we're sort of at this interesting moment with the passage of 
of AB 43 uh, this year, which which you and DOT were were, were so 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 crucial in getting done. You know, we're going to be reducing speed on 177 miles of streets. That's a that's a big turning point for us. Uh, you know, hopefully we can we can we can match that with the engineering that's really necessary to get people to to slow down and drive safely and responsibly. Um, so I, again, um, thank you again, Lauren, for your leadership and, and for your dedication. Um, you know, your perseverance and drive one community and, and council office support for the transformative Adams Boulevard safety project that uh, took four years of, of persistence. And while we're gonna miss your contributions, Division Zero, your promotion uh, is, is well, well deserved. Mr. Briscaina, anything you'd like? Yeah, to I just also want to echo um, your your um, your comments and, and gratitude to Lauren. Um, appreciate your your dedication, commitment to this, Lauren, over the years, and congratulations on on your promotion as well. But I didn't see a motion come forward of of allowing you to leave us. Did you see that come through, Mike? No. Okay. But nonetheless, we're going to miss you and thank you. I do want to recognize, though, um, some of the concerns that we're seeing, of course, the fact that we've come a long way with Vision Zero. You see the action plan in 2017 with DOT installing um, 5,000, according to the report, 5,594 safety treatments on the high injury network, uh, including a little over 1,100 of those, uh, 1,100 in two, 2021. And we're with traffic related deaths, serious injuries still so high and increasing. It's, it's difficult to review the, the Vision Zero program and not have some questions about how effective it is. However, I do know that it's complicated and there's um, a, a lot of uh, coordination that's, that's needed um, and, you know, changing public behavior or behavior is, is challenging. Um, and there's a lot of contributing factors uh, which are out of our control. Can you walk us through, um, aside from what beyond our control, can you walk us through some of the other challenges that have, have you've seen over the, over the courses these last several years as it relates to Vision Zero? Dan, would you like? I don't to know take for Dan, that? Dan or Lauren. Yeah, I, I'd be happy to. I'll be happy to take yeah. that. Um, and I think, you know, I touched on some of those in my opening remarks. So we are using a data-driven process to identify those places that are most, most worthy of investing resources and making changes and where we are investing and, um, and building and redesigning and reimagining those places are experiencing significant changes as as Lauren pointed out um, on um, on Avalon that's you know was a six mile stretch and saw a significant reduction in people um, in speeding and of course the, the that speeding results in you know the tragic loss of life um, but there are there are elements that are outside of our control and that's that's this you know, this, what I called an epidemic of a lack of respect, where we're seeing people drive 90 miles an hour on our city streets, lose control, and uh, crash into, uh, yeah. spin out and crash into a woman who just got off the bus and kill her. You know, that, that kind of behavior, that disrespectful behavior goes beyond what, um, you know, what we can do with lines and signs and, and signals. So, so you're really saying, need saying, Dan, that you can't fix stupid? Yeah, uh, lightly. Yeah, it, there's there's uh, something going on there. Yeah, very frustrating. That, that is very frustrating. Yeah. I will also chime in to say that um, the types of changes that need to be made require quite a bit of community engagement, which takes time and resources. Um, so a single project may take, um, you know, one year. Um, of great community engagement in order to um, prepare the community for the changes, get everybody on board, and really um, facilitate that conversation that Dan's talking about um, 
in, in changing the way that we're approaching and, and treating each other on the streets. Appreciate that. And thanks the work that you're doing in Wilmington as well as in Watts. I know we have some, some big ticket items there as it relates to, to Vision Zero. Looking forward to seeing that come through. And also in San Pedro, where we've seen um, a drastic reduction in uh, traffic fatalities and, um, and injuries uh, along the Pacific and Gaffey corridors, knowing thousands of kids across those streets to get to um, the local elementary, middle school, and high schools. Um, so saving lives here and know a lot of work needs to be done more. So thank you. All right. Um, so uh, with that objection, we will receive and file this item. Uh, so thank you again. Um, and I believe that clears the desk. Am I correct? That is correct, Mr. Chair. All right. Uh, thank you all. Thank you, everybody. If you'd like to uh, uh, catch the next installment of the Joe and Mike show, uh, <laughs> our, our next uh, joint committee meeting, T3, is uh, starting at 3.30. <laughs> Thank you all. Take care. Thank you. Thank you.